The next step is going to be setting up very simple animations for our bird to switch between our three sprites. So we're gonna do this using the animation window, the animator window, and a few lines of code. So first of all, we need to select the bird game object and go to window, animation. You can also push control six. This will open the animation window. This is kind of huge. I'm gonna take it and dock it with my scene view. And there's a little shortcut here to begin animating our bird, create an animator and an animation clip. We can just hit the create button and we're gonna use that. So click create with the bird selected. And our first animation is gonna be called idle. That's sort of the default frame that the bird is in now. We're gonna name this file idle and then we're gonna make a new folder called animation and save that file in there. Now you'll notice when we do that, it adds an animator controller here. It adds an animator component and creates an animator controller asset. And we're gonna look at that animator controller in a second. So by doing that one thing, we've created two files and also added an animator component to our bird. So a couple sort of automated steps there that Unity is doing for you to get you ready to animate. Now, the animation on this is gonna be really, really simple. It's just gonna be changing what sprite is being displayed in the sprite renderer when we tell it to. So all we need to do is with the bird selected, click add property, unfold the sprite renderer, highlight the sprite property at the bottom of that category, and then just scroll over a little bit so that you can see the plus button, which is sort of hidden by the edge of the window, and hit the plus button here. So scroll over and hit plus. Now, since there's gonna be no beginning and end to this sprite, we can actually just highlight the keyframe, which is the little diamond icon here, and delete the second keyframe. And so now we just have an animation, which is one second of the same sprite, which is our default idle sprite. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag to select that and then choose edit copy. You can also push control C. Now I'm gonna create another animation clip, which is going to be our second image. So we're gonna click on idle, click on the, oops, nope, click on the drop down menu here and choose create new clip. And this one is gonna be called flap. Hit save to create the new animation clip. And now all we need to do is just click somewhere in the animation window and choose edit, paste to paste back in our single keyframe sprite change or setting of the sprite that we did in the other clip, but now we're gonna change it. So we can see over here in the inspector that the sprite is red. And that's because any changes we make to it are now gonna be recorded into the animation. And so what we're gonna do, and that's because this record button is highlighted here, and that's done by default when we create the new animation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unfold the sprites folder and we're gonna have, we're gonna grab bird hero one and drag it into the sprite field. Now we can see that the game view updates to show the bird is flapping his wing, right? And now our flap animation clip is ready to go. Now we're just gonna create our third clip, which is gonna be our die clip. So we're just gonna choose create new clip call this one die, hit save. Again, click in the animation window. I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut, control V to paste it in and select the bird. And I'm just gonna drag in my bird hero two sprite now, which is the dead bird. Now, each of these clips is ready to use 
but we need to set up the rules from which we will change from one clip to another or under which we will change from one clip to another. So when we started setting up our animation, it opened the animator window, right? As distinct from the animation window. So we're gonna to switch to the animator window and we'll see here that we have the three, we have three states that have been created for the three clips that we created. Now, I'm just gonna arrange them a little bit just by left clicking and dragging, put them relatively close together so we can see them all. So the entry node here is when the animator becomes active and starts evaluating the state machine here, this is where we're gonna start. So we're gonna start at entry and each of these lines represents a transition. So the default transition, and the reason that this is sort of golden orange, is that we are gonna start and go straight to the idle animation clip or state, or the state which references the clip, which is here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up conditions under which we're gonna go from idle to die and from idle to flap. Now to do this and to control this via script, we're gonna need two of what are called parameters. And so over here on the left, you'll see a list of layers and a list of parameters. In the list of parameters, we're gonna hit the plus button and create a trigger parameter. This trigger parameter is gonna be called flap with a capital F. And so this, we're gonna set this trigger via script every time we want our bird to transition to the flap state and play the flap clip. We're also gonna have a second trigger parameter, and I'm clicking on the plus button here to bring up this menu, called die, with a capital D. The names are important because we're gonna be referencing them via string, via script, so make sure that they match exactly. Now, we've got our parameters ready to use. We need to create some transitions between these different states. Let's set up the transition from idle to die first. To create a transition between two states, I'm gonna right click on idle, choose make transition, and drag to the die state. Now, to edit the conditions under which this transition will happen, I'm gonna click on the transition itself on this little arrow on this line. Now, right now, there's one condition, which is has exit time. What that means is once we've gotten to the end of the one second for idle, it will transition automatically. We don't actually want that to happen because we want idle to loop and remain active until the player dies. So we're gonna turn off has exit time, and we're gonna add our own condition to the list of conditions here. We're gonna hit the plus button in the list of conditions, and in, Flap is the first in the list, so that's gonna come up, but we're actually gonna select die. So when the die trigger is set via script, then we're gonna to transition to the die animation. And you'll see, once we turned off exit time, we got a little warning here because without exit time and any condition here, there's no way that that animation transition will ever happen, but we've solved that now, so we can actually clear that error from the console or that warning. Okay, now we're never gonna transition from die back to idle because when the game ends, we're just gonna restart the whole level and reset everything. So that's okay, having a single transition going in that direction. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna transition from idle to flap and back. So let's click on idle, right click to, and choose make transition, drag to flap and left click, and this, we're gonna turn off has exit time as well. And for this one, the condition is going to be the trigger flap. Now, all we need is a transition from flap back to idle. And for this, we will use has exit time. So basically, we're gonna transition from idle to flap when the trigger is set and then flap will wait for one second, the default length of the animation clip and transition back to idle once it's finished playing. So now we can play our scene. Let me make sure that the record button is turned off in the animation so I don't actually accidentally animate something I don't mean to. I noticed that because my play button was red. 
So just make sure that's off so you don't accidentally add animation unintentionally. And so now we can play our scene and experiment with these triggers. So I'm going to play. The bird's going to fall to the ground. And now when I we can see that we're currently in the idle state, right? When I manually click the die, we can see that it transitions to the die state and my bird dies. Now, there's no way to go back. So let's exit play mode and re-enter play mode. And for flap, we can test by clicking flap. We can see the wing goes up and then it comes back down. So that is all working as intended. The only thing that we need to do now is write lines of code in our script, which will set those triggers at the appropriate moment. So let's double click on our bird script again to open it for editing, return to mono develop. And now what we're gonna need to do, just like we added a reference to the rigid body 2D component, we're gonna add a private animator variable, which we're going to call anim for short, and we're going to get and store a reference to it in start as well. So we're going to say anim equals get component animator. Now we can send commands to the animator component using the anim variable. So what we're going to do is when we're adding force in update, we're also going to play our animation. So we're going to use anim.setTrigger and pass in the trigger that we want to set. And we're going to pass it in using its name as a string. To pass it as a string, we need to set it in quotation marks and type it exactly as we set it up in the animator. So we're going to call anim.setTrigger and pass in the string parameter flap. To transition to the die state, we're going to call anim.setTrigger. And in this case, we're going to pass in the string die. And that is going to be called from within on collision enter 2D so that when the bird crashes into something, we're going to set is dead to equal true so we can't flap anymore and use anim.setTrigger die to transition to the dead sprite. Let's hit control S to save the script and switch back over to the Unity editor. Now we can play our scene and test our animations. So we can flap by clicking and we can die by falling on the ground. So we're off to a good start. Let me pause for a moment and check the chat for questions. In the next phase, we're going to move on to setting up some UI to show the score in a game over message, as well as write a game controller script. Uh, Nitroba asks if these animations would apply the same if you were using 3D assets. Yes the same principle would be true. The animator would be set up in the same way.